these um, Sean Wolf uh, with uh, Jack Shellman, Mr. Hack, and Lisa from IBM Research, and my advisor, uh, Cornell uh, Kenita. So, I'm going to talk about cloud synchronization. Um, so, having a common reference tank is a fundamental requirement of many distributed applications. For instance, in hyper trading systems, it's needed to maintain consolidated or distributed transactions. It's also <coughs> probably used in IPv4 networks to synchronize the speed of the encoder and the decoder uh, so that you don't have buffer overflow or deflow. Um, given in globally distributed uh, databases like uh, Google Spanner, uh, synchronization is um, fundamental. It requires essentially the duration of the, the latency of the queries uh, critically depend on how well synchronized are the different uh, computers in the, the network. Yeah. So the problem is actually the formulation is quite simple. We have a network and several nodes. Each of these nodes has a, its own estimate of this global time. So I'm going to use T for global time. Uh, and usually there's at least one node that has some access to this global reference of time, uh, which sometimes is uh, the UTC, Universal Coordinated Time. Um, and the objective is actually to uh, propagate uh, through the network this notion of, of this global reference of time, such that each individual of the other uh, computers can actually correct its local estimation to be equal to this global reference T. Okay? So this problem is actually, has been studied for a long time, more than 20 years, and there are several solutions available, uh, some of them are standards. For instance, in the internet, the de facto standard is called Network Time Protocol, NTP, so probably most of you know it. Um, so a couple of characteristics is that it can achieve precision of 100, around 100 microseconds of a few milliseconds dependent on the network um, latencies. Uh, it has a hierarchical structure. It goes from like uh, the stratum one and the, the stratum two uh, sort of follows uh, stratum one and so on and so forth into different stratums. Uh, <coughs> and it's used uh, it's useful for distributed applications that actually involve uh, human interactions. There are, there are not too many interactions per, per second. Uh, so if you actually were interested in more in other like high performance systems, then other, other type of protocols like uh, precision time protocol or even IBM coordinated cluster time. The precision here is actually much higher. You can get up to a few hundred uh, nanoseconds or a few milliseconds. However, you actually you need to add additional uh, power to the network in order to correct these network latencies, so at least keep track of them so that you can correct the, off the, off the measurements that you do, essentially the offset measurements that you do between the different uh, <coughs> nodes. Um, and it is used in control measurement systems and financial applications. Uh, so what I'm going to present here is actually a solution that can achieve uh, microsecond level um, precision without actually needing to used any additional hardware. Um, and the key of the solution is actually to focus on how each one of the nodes in the network uh, correct the clocks, each individual clock. So I'm going to go to the different. So we don't need any type of, we don't focus on actually reducing the uh, errors in the offsets. So, OK. So this is the algorithm we talk. Um, first, I'm going to show a very simple model to describe the difference between all the current protocols that are available. Uh, and show what are the challenges, and then I'm gonna introduce our skillless algorithm, and I'm gonna say why we put this name. Uh, also present some conversion analysis, and we implemented the solution too, and we have experimental results. And finally, I'm gonna summarize. So, <coughs> these are fairly simple models for a clock. So essentially, when a computer starts, let's say at time to zero, then you have an initial guess of what's the estimate of the global time, x i zero. Um, and then, we actually can see here the two different sources of error that you have when you try to synchronize clocks. One is the initial guess that you have at say zero, and the other is the, the rate of the clock, the frequency of the clock. So here we use R sub i to represent the internal clock skew. That's like the frequency error of the clock with respect to this global time. And S i is going to be this uh, correction factor that is usually used to compensate this error, okay? So the question is fairly simple, how can we make this estimation xi equal to t? Well, um, there's a couple of things you can do. For instance, you can measure the offset. If you have another node that actually has access to this global reference of time, then you measure the offset between your local time and 
that uh, the least known times. Um, you can also try to compute the relative frequency error. Essentially, you take two different measurements of offset at a different time, and then you get uh, this information. And essentially, when you have these two informations, you can actually compensate the skew, compensate the frequency error, and also add, add an additional offset so that you end up running with the same speed as the global reference time and exactly with the same value. Okay, so it seems fairly easy. Uh, however, there are several challenges in, the, in this problem. First of all, this frequency error actually changes with time, uh, which is usually called wonder. So it varies a long time and depends on the temperature of, uh, and several other factors. Um, and also, like the offset measurements that can do through the network um, actually are very noisy. So there's a lot of source of noise over there. Um, and finally, that dependency to uh, graph, essentially, who gets information from who in this network uh, can introduce instabilities and also propagate the noise. So there are many different aspects that you need to solve. And the way current protocols uh, solve it right now is by periodically making corrections on the clocks and trying to keep uh, the dependency graph fairly simple. So you want to avoid loops uh, so that you, you don't have, uh, incur in this type of instability. Yeah. So to go more precisely of how these different protocols work, uh, I'm going to use this simple system, essentially. So we have every tau second, we assume that uh, every com the computer actually corrects the clocks. And we can represent the time, uh, the estimated time of a, a certain, say, tk plus 1 to be equal to the time at, uh, at tk, so one period before plus the, the U estimated time of that, that has elapsed, and possible two types of correction. One that I'm going to call offset correction, which is goes directly to a correction in the time value, and also a skew correction, which is actually a correction of this frequency. And different protocols actually have the different options. For instance, there are some protocols that use only offset corrections. You can use offset corrections based only on, on your offset values that you measure, or also using the frequency errors. And the problem is that they do not converge. Uh, so essentially, uh, if you don't change the frequency of your local clock, you periodically have to correct back again to compensate this, uh, this, this skew. Uh, you can also have backward jumps, which actually means that you might have a later time that has a a smaller value, and this is actually critical in many applications that you want to avoid. So <coughs> this is one of the first problems, and actually this type of solutions is the one used in NTPv3 and NTPv4, and the way they try to uh, solve this problem is by uh, carefully um, choosing how much you actually you correct the time. So it has its own limitations. Uh, another type of solution is actually con con concentrate on only changing the, the speed. But in order to do this, you also need to have this frequency error value. And the problem with this is that um, usually frequency estimation is uh, it's more complicated than only offset measurements. And furthermore, if you have if you're in a network, these frequencies change with time and make this problem quite challenging. Um, it, the good thing is that it does converge without having this uh, jump, these steep changes. Uh, it, does, it needs to estimate the frequency error, and one solution that I actually proposes is the IBM coordinated cluster time. So they actually implement this type of algorithm. And finally, there's another type of solution where you actually you correct both of them using only offset information. Uh, it does converge. Uh, however, you can also have backward jumps, which is something that you want to avoid. And it was proposed by Carl Tenberg in CP 2010. So the question is, can we avoid back, backward jumps and also avoid estimating the frequency of this skew? Uh, and the, the answer is going to be in the following slide, and it's essentially yes. So what we want to do is only use uh, offset measurements, and we only want to ch make changes on the skew, on this uh, frequency compensation. Um, if you try to do it like very naively, then you just use offset measurements to change the skew, then you have a problem if it's actually unstable. So okay, I'm showing the offset between the, the leader and, and the follower nodes. And you can see actually that there's oscillations, and also the oscillations increase in amplitude exponentially. So uh, how can you actually avoid this? Well, here's a way to do it. <coughs> so what we do is we, we make a, an exponent, we, we take an exponential average of the offset. So say here, the red, you have the offset measurements, 
and you make a smoothing uh, average of that, which is uh, using these Y values. It's a new state of the system. Um, and you can see that if you use it to compensate these offset measurements, you can actually have the system conversion like we, what we have here in red compared to what we had before in blue. Okay, so uh, it's a fairly nice way to do it, and you don't need to have a frequency error measurements. Uh, <laughs> however, so we are interested in actually having this protocol not in one-to-one -one configuration, but rather in a network. So we send this protocol to a network, and the way you do that is just whenever you have one offset measurement, so you have a weighted average of your neighbors. So it's a weighted average of the offsets between all your neighbors. Uh, you use the weight of that are alpha IJ. So the algorithm works as follows. So in, at every iteration, you make measurements of each of your neighbors, offset measurements, and then you update both the skew and this uh, estimation that we had before, where we substituted the, this offset measurement by the weighted average of all the offsets of your neighbors. We can actually analyze the conversion of this system. Uh, in, in fact, uh, we can even show that this system converges even if there's no leader, essentially, if, there, if everybody uh, tries to get some information from somebody else, it still converges. Uh, and we can even map uh, the parameter values with a if and only if condition of power synchronization. So it's not very important all these conditions. Uh, perhaps the only interesting one is the third one, where we have this tab, this tau value that was the uh, updating time. So uh, it turns out that if there is a bound on how how slow you can update, and if this bound depends on several par on the parameters of the system, but importantly depends on this mu max, which is a an eigenvalue that depends on the topology of the network. So essentially, the topology uh, plays an important role of how often you can update. And I'm going, I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, the result is actually for a large family of, of networks, which include three uh, symmetric networks and also a mix of them. So, <coughs> so implementation. So we implemented this protocol. Uh, we tested on a, a cluster of IBM Blade servers. Uh, the code is in C. Um, we have to use the IBM CCT solution as uh, our base code. Uh, we maintain a virtual clock. We don't use the OS clock since we actually want to correct uh, specifically the, the frequency ourselves. Uh, we use the TSC, the TSC counter as our source of timing. And everything is configured in a file. So in the next uh, experimental results, I'm going to use these default values whenever it's not uh, mentioned. Um, alpha IJ is going to be uniform among all the different neighbors of, of each individual node, and CI is at some commit value, but that's such a type of a gain value. Um, so we first test conversions. Uh, for instance, uh, if you recall this condition that we had before, this bound on tau. Uh, so if for the parameter value that I mentioned before, uh, if we have tau equal to one second, we have actually that the condition is satisfied. Uh, and we see that actually the offset of the of the, of the client that gets gets very very close to the to, to zero, so it synchronizes with the with the leader, which is nice. However, if you now change uh, instead of having this configuration, we go to a two-node configuration with a loop between them. Then it turns out that the same solution uh, we can see experimentally that it's no longer stable, and it turns out that our uh, our constraint is also not satisfied, so the theory matches the, uh, the, the, exper the experiment. And if we actually change the tau value to a smaller value, that's such that it satisfies the previous condition, then we recover conversions again. So, <coughs> and so the, the key is actually we have this type of loops that actually can introduce instability, but if you know what you're doing and you have uh, good information about which tau to use, then you can solve this problem. And furthermore, uh, I should say that uh, you can always find, there's a way to find a tau, uh, so a updating time, such that it will work for any network. So there's a way to do it, and you can deploy it without problems. Uh, so furthermore, actually, we can show that in, in our scheme, the loops actually can help to synchronize better. Uh, we're going to use this, the metric as this normalize sum of the variance between the leader and all the clients. And to see how loops can help, we're going to start with a start topology, 
and we're going to start to add connections between the clients until you end up with a complete subgraph between all the, all the clients. Um, in this graph, we can see actually that uh, <coughs> this, variance val this variance metric can get reduced from um, more than two, uh, uh, 1,300 microseconds up to, two, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, 1,300 microseconds to 250, so almost an, an order of magnitude, like actually uh, between, between the two of them. Um, so furthermore, um, we, we can compare the performance of our algorithm with um, NTP4, we, we tested it, and we can see actually that we get a reduction in, in the variance of a factor of 2.6. Uh, here you can see the CDF of the offsets, of the offset samples that we have, um, and it turns out that our algorithm in red actually uh, performs up to much better than than NTP before, and um, even more, uh, our algorithm can converge much faster. If, uh, for example, if you start with pulse, the protocol synchronized, and you had a, a steep uh, change of 25 milliseconds to to the to the leader, then you can see that NTP takes up to four and a half hours to to reach to the same precision that our algorithm reached in one hour. Um, so, the, and the key here is that actually NTP, uh, since it makes offset corrections, it cannot update that fast as what we can do by making skew corrections. And we, and we even uh, compare our performance with also IBM CCT solution. Um, <coughs> so, um, sorry, I should have said that here, we also use the same tau between the, the two protocols so that to make the comparison fair. Uh, here, in, we compare with IBM CCT. We also see that the, 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 the standard devia the deviation of our metric uh, actually performs much, much better to our, for our algorithm. And uh, even the maximum offset, so the maximum offset ever, ever, ever measured between the, the client and the leader, uh, the, yeah, uh, it's actually much better in our case, actually almost half of what you see in the other one, depending on. Uh, how big is the, the sheet or the, the noise in the network. Uh, so in summary, uh, so we propose an algorithm that can synchronize without explicitly uh, measuring or estimating the, the frequency error between the different clocks and, without, and also without avoiding this type of steep jumps in the corrections. Uh, we, we prove conversions even in the presence of loops, which is something that it was usually avoided for all the standardized protocols. Uh, and we even showed actually these loops, whenever you, you, you actually use it, uh, can be beneficial to minimizing the, the offset efforts of the network. And our algorithm also outperforms NTP before and IBM CCT. Um, so we also have an additional result that are not presented in this paper. And, Essentially, we're able to study the effect of noise and bias uh, information in the offset. Uh, and we also are able to optimize the parameter values so that it re minimizes the, the, the offset variance too. Uh, so this actually concludes my talk, and if you have any questions. Okay, thank you.